Now, the next section we're going to talk about really just takes this idea and runs with it. You see, we, we stuck with this special case of thermometers for a very long time because they had a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. What you need to know is that's not really relevant in order to do this problem. You see, a z-score, what's a z-score do? It translates something. You have to know what it translates. It translates what into what? Don't get silent on me. You got to know I've talked about it at least four times in this class. Say that one more time. Very good. That's what the z-score does. So even if I'm not given a mean of zero and I'm not given a standard deviation of one, I can translate that information into a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one using the z-score. And that's the idea for section 6.3. So are we going to be doing anything different in 6.3? No, no. Same stuff. Same stuff. It's just we're going to be using a z-score and it's going to actually be relevant. Instead of giving us the same number, it'll give us a z-score that represents the value I'm giving you. Let's look at an example and kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. You ready for it? Okay, so 6.3, we're talking about applications. And really, we are just using a z-score because we know, and I've talked about this at length, that that's going to translate a normal distribution to a standard normal because it maps any mean to zero and any number that's one standard deviation away from the mean to one. Two standard deviations away to two, and, and so on. So let's look at something that doesn't have a mean of zero. Uh, this, this certain group of men, this population of men somewhere, has a, a mean weight, which means they averaged all their weights, and their average was 172 pounds. Seventy-two pounds and a standard deviation of 29 pounds. You know what's great about this section? You rarely have to find mean and standard deviation on your own. It's kind of nice. It takes a long time. So it's always given, given to you. If it's not, you can find it. It's not a big deal. You know how to do that. It's just a pain. What I want to know is the probability that a randomly selected man from this population will have a weight of less than 174 pounds. I'm putting these numbers up here for a reason, because I'm going to make you very, very good at understanding the difference between a z-score and a probability. I'm going to make you very, very good at that, because you have to know that. Okay, so we got this population. They got a mean weight of 172. Hey, that's me. They got a standard deviation of 29. <laughs> Find the probability that a random second man will have a weight of less than 174 pounds. Well, before we draw a picture, we need to translate this thing. We need to translate this score into something that's going to fit on a standard normal distribution. The reason why is because if you look up your, your table right now, if you put it 174, is that on your table? No, you got stuff between 0 and 3, right? 0 and 3.5 maybe. I don't know what's on your table. But it goes up to, I think, 3.5, I believe. That's it. You can't look up 174. So in order to do this, you have to translate this to standard normal. What does that for us? That's it. Find a z-score. Find a z-score. So for us, the first thing we're going to be doing is finding a z-score. That's step number one. Ladies and gentlemen, what is your x value in this case? Good. x is the variable. That's what's changing here. The mean and the standard deviation will not change. So in our case, the x is 174. 
Can you tell me what is the mean? Okay, tell me what is the standard deviation, please. You all okay with where those numbers come from? Now, you know what? One of the biggest mistakes, it's a simple mistake, but it's a huge mistake. Before you start going on your own, please listen for it very carefully. A lot of people will get these numbers screwed up, and they'll, they'll always put the big one minus the small one. I don't know why that is, because this formula doesn't change. This formula says x minus mean, no matter what the x is, no matter what the mean is, you do the x first, then you do the mean. You with me? Because otherwise, you'll always get a positive if you always put the big one first. That doesn't make sense. You're going to have negative values. Anything to the left of the mean is going to be a negative z-score. So do this in the appropriate order. In our case here, we've got, what's going to come first, 174 or 172? 172. Minus what? 172. All over? Nine. So in our case, we have 2 over 29. How much is 2 divided by 29? <coughs> Point zero six seven. Point zero seven. Okay, and you're 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 using a z score, right? Your table only goes to point something something. Point zero what? Don't say six seven. Don't say that. It only goes to two decimal places. It's okay. Point zero. Yeah. Round appropriate. Seven. Your z score is point zero seven. Point zero seven. We're going to go one minute over. Um, if you have a z score of 0 0.07, a z score of 0 0.07, does this mean you have a 7% chance of doing that? Is that what that means? No. No, you actually have to put this on your graph. If I draw my picture, I draw my picture, here's what this means, ladies and gentlemen. Watch carefully. You're not going to get very many examples like this where it's a point. I just need to make sure that you don't, because what happens on your test, a lot of people go, oh, z score is 0 0.07. That's my area. It's less than 1. Yay, I'm done. I go, I have no idea what you're doing. Okay. What you found is a distance from the mean. This is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. Where's the mean here? In the middle, left, right, where's it at? Middle. Mm -hmm. And how much is the mean always? Zero. Where is 0 0.07 in accordance to the mean? Is it to the right or the left? It's positive, correct? Yeah. So it's just a little, but not much. I mean, 0 0.07, that's like, that's like right there. It's really close. Zero point zero seven. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Here's what you've done. Here's what you've done right now. You've just translated a normal distribution into a standard normal. This is all the z-score did. I need you to really understand this here, folks. Focus for a little bit. This score is really that number. You with me? It's just this number represented on this picture. That's all it is. You still have to look up and find the area. What value are you going to look up and find the area? Okay. Now, we're looking for uh, greater than or less than? Wait, okay, less than. Should I be shading to the right or to the left? Left. Less than left. If I look up 0 0.07 on my table, if I plug in negative 10 to 0 0.07 on my calculator, it's going to give me this area. That's going to be the correct area. So I'm going to do that real quick for me and we'll be done. What's, what'd you get? 0.4721. 0.4721. Um, it should be greater than 0.5. 0.528? On the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the table says 0 0.5279. 0 0.5279 on the table. Your calculator will give you something a little bit different than this because your calculator will be exactly accurate up to four decimal places. You follow? What's it mean? Well, this interpretation would be there's a 52.8% chance that you're going to randomly select a man and he will have a weight of less than 174 pounds. That's what that says. You'll have to write the interpretation, but that's about it. How many feel okay with what we talked about so far? Can you do that? Z-score, draw a picture, look it up. We'll practice more of this next time. Okay, so 
IQ is normally distributed. It has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Here's the question. What we want to do is find out the percentage of people who have an IQ between a certain range. So what percentage of people or another word you could use in this case is proportion. What proportion of people or percentage of people <coughs> have an IQ between 85 and 125. Note that what IQ means is that most people are going to be around an IQ of 100. That's what the average means. It's, it's the mean is 100. So most people around there, standard deviation is 15, which means when we go right and left by units of 15, we get proportions of data that are increasing as we go out. So firstly, can you identify, please, for me, what is our mu in this case? What's our mu? Very good. That's our mean. OK. What is our sigma? Good, because that says a standard deviation. So for the population, the mean is 100, the standard deviation, or sigma, is 15. What is my x value? 85. Wait a minute, I have two of them? I guess so. Yeah, it says between two values. Right? That means I'm going to have to look up two scores. Uh, I've been saying this a lot, but what we're doing here is we're translating a data value into a z-score. What that does is translates the normal distribution here, by the way. Was this important that I said normally distributed? Yeah. Otherwise, you can't use this stuff. So it, we're translating a normal distribution into a standard normal distribution by using the z-score. That's, that's exactly what we're doing. Do you remember that? We talked about that a couple times. I actually review that. So what we have to do is translate these two scores. Let's call this x1 and x2 these two scores and the z-scores, that way we can find out the area between them. You see, right now, there's no way to find out the percentage between these numbers unless we translate it to a z-score. That's the whole idea. We've got to translate that to a z-score. Can you guys translate these two x values, these two data values, into z-scores? Okay, go ahead and spend some time and do that now. Remember, the formula for z-score doesn't change. You'll probably have it memorized if you don't already by the end of this class. Uh, z equals x minus mu over sigma. Make sure you have x minus mu. x minus mu minus mu. Don't do the mu minus x. It's always x minus mu. So the first step in doing this problem is you've got to be able to calculate the z-score. That's number one. Translate your data values into z-score values. So the first z-score, if we do 85 minus 125 over 15. By the way, do you have that on your paper, folks? That's not that. I'm glad you don't have that on your paper. How about that? Do you have that on your paper? How many will do? Have exactly that. Okay, how much is that? Notice that if you were to reverse these,